Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I am back with another Halloween video. So today's video is using a bunch of the newer Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Halloween sets because of course I bought them. I buy a lot of the Stampers Anonymous sets and just collect them. <laughs> Trying to make a point of using them though, because seriously. So I started with the Rest in Peace set that has this huge skull image. Fun fact, I'm not a fan of like skull decor, that sort of a thing, you know, it's just not my thing. But for Halloween stuff, of course, it's perfect. So I stamped the images onto just white heavy stock using Black Soot Distress Archival ink. The archival ink is like waterproof and isn't going to smudge, anything like that. So I stamped the skulls and then I pulled out the Moth Study stamp set that was also released just a couple months ago with the Halloween stuff. Anyway, um, another fun fact, I hate moths. <laughs> They're on the same level of phobia as I have of spiders. Not a fan, even though there's a few beautiful ones out there. You see images online and it's like, wow, you know, regular moss. Oh, mm -mm, no, it's the flutteriness and getting in my hair that I just freak out. Anyway, still had to have this stamp set. To me, I just, in my head, I tell myself they're butterflies. <laughs> it's like, it's okay. We're good. We're good. But anyway, had to stamp pretty much all of the images practically from the set. Um, when I started like making this, I was only going to make one card. I had a rough idea in my head of what I was doing. Wasn't quite sure. So I was just kind of winging it at first. So same thing. I'm going to ink these up with that black soot distress archival and stamp it onto this heavy stock paper. Um, in the end, thinking now, I, I didn't have to use heavy stock for this. I could have used pretty much any white cardstock because I'm not doing a bunch of like water techniques but again I wasn't sure at this point I was thinking of doing like ink smushing possibly adding a bunch of water splatters things like that and that's what the heavy stock is really really good for but what I end up doing is just some very simple ink blending so like I said anything could have worked for this with cardstock wise anyway so I had all my images stamped and I thought I'd take a second show what I'm working on because people ask about like craft mats things like that I have my waffle flower mini stencil mat here that's the silicone one and it's clinging to my tonic uh magnetic crafters platform I had mentioned this in a recent video so I like my tonic platform I have a little um cable binder ring on it and I'll link to all the things with supplies like I always do so I can hang it up on a hook and then yeah, the waffle flower mats, whether they're the stencil mats or the original water medium mats, they'll cling to like this platform or they'll cling to like the Tim Holtz glass media mat. So nice. I need to do this more often because these mats don't cling to my like regular craft mat work surface. So they'll slide around a bit, but it clings to this perfectly. And then the magnets will work through the silicone, no problem. So you guys will probably see this in more videos. So anyway, got my whole little setup. I have my little ink stand that holds the mini distress inks and I'm just doing very simple ink blending. Like I'm just adding some pumice stone, some old paper distress ink, and I'm going to add a little bit of hickory smoke with my little blending brushes. I am not worried about the mess I'm making like outside the images. It's, you know, it looks gross. It's irrelevant. I'm going to trim these out so it's not going to matter. So I just wanted that bit of color. So I just blend it on the color and then I'm going to do the same thing with the butterflies. This is why I had said you could use any cardstock for this because I'm not. I in the end didn't add any you know water splatters or ink smushing or anything like that. I was like ooh, I can just blend this because I decided I was going to fussy cut every single one of these. <laughs> it didn't take that long also because when I fussy cut them I'm not I didn't trim out their little like antenna antennae however you say it you know what I mean and some of them have like little legs <sighs> I'm literally getting shivers thinking about moths right now anyway I didn't trim out those parts I, I just cut cut them right off the image I just trimmed out like basically the wings and the bodies so the the fussy cutting element of this was negligible like no problem at all so I did all my ink blending 
And then after I had them blended, this is when I realized I was like, I have enough for two sets of rainbow colors. And then just one random extra pink one, which was perfect because I didn't like the smaller one for, for when it comes to applying everything. So after I did all that, I used my tonic aqua shimmer pen and painted over all of the bodies with that, which on camera looks kind of like nothing. It always does. Even though in real life, like as I'm painting it, I can see exactly where the shimmer is, what I'm doing. Although again, I like was very deliberate with my painting and like stayed inside the lines, even though I knew I was going to fussy cut these. So I could have just slapped it on. It wouldn't have mattered. It's funny how we do things like that sometimes, you know, because I was like going to cut outside the lines. I had no problem ink blending outside of it, but yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't really waste any of the shimmer, but at the end, I will turn the flash out on my phone so you guys can see just how sparkly these are. It was, I, I had to do it. So painted them all with that. Fussy cut all the images like I do. I just zone out. I don't really do fussy cutting on camera. It's harder to like hold an image, you know, in frame and try to cut. Nah, I just sit and fussy cut and watch, you know, YouTube videos, Netflix, the, you know, just whatever. So listen to music, audiobooks, all that stuff. So these didn't take very long. Once they were fussy cut and I did cut inside that part, like inside the, the jaw, I guess of these skulls that I used a craft knife for, which is rare, but I thought it just gave it that little extra something. So after I had them all cut out, I took my Memento tuxedo black marker and just edged all of these pieces. It just coats that exposed white cardstock and just, it's subtle. It's just a subtle little thing, but in, for me, I think it's definitely worth it. You can't really see it much on camera, but with the finished card and the dark background that I'm gonna use, it does make everything look a little more, not seamless, but I guess just finished. So speaking of the background, I have Simon's slate cardstock, so nice dark gray cardstock. And I have my pieces in my Misty and I'm using more images from the rest in peace set. So I lined them up kind of how I wanted them. They're more just again for kind of pattern and whatnot, but you can still see it in the end. So got those lined up ink those up with that same black soot distress archival stamped it and then i'll do that a second time with the second piece so once i've got both of these stamped i'm going to use regular black soot ink to blend all around the edges and because i'd stamped these sentiments with archival ink they're not going to smear you know, because if you're using like water-based inks and you're blending on top of them, especially with sentiments, a lot of times that can, you know, start smearing things, which wouldn't be the end of the world, you know, because again, messy background, like it's a background, it's dark, I'm going to add splatter, it's kind of irrelevant, but I just thought I would mention that because you never know. So blended regular black soot distress ink over all of this. And then um, once that's blended, like I said, splatter, <laughs> of course. So I'm going to put these into my spot box and I finally found my little mini mister that I have that has just water and perfect pearl powder in it. So you have to just shake it up really, really well. And it just gives me my shimmer mixture. Do this or like I've shown in a bajillion videos, I just I'll take perfect pearl powder, stick it on a like a little palette, mix it with the water and splatter with a paintbrush. Whatever floats your boat, either one works. It's beautiful beautiful shimmer goodness. And I, again, splattered the ever living daylights out of these. I just, I love the big splats I was getting. Love it. So splattered these really, really well. <laughs> like just kept adding more and more. I was like, That's, there's never enough. I have yet to get to a point with anything I've made that I'm like, oh no, that's too much splatter. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I'm sure I'll get to that, you know, someday. You never know. But if you saw my last video that I uploaded with like, what was it? Three different kinds of splatter? Four? I don't even remember. Anyway. Anyway. Set that aside to dry. The sentiment, this one I'm way heated embossing. This is from the Snarky Cat Halloween set. This came out last year. I think this was last year. I can't even remember. I actually just got my hands on it this year. And this one sentiment was too perfect that says, not only does my mind wander, sometimes it walks off completely. <laughs> I love the snarky sets. I love the snarky sentiments. The Tim Holtz line has quite a few of them and they're just, they float my boat. Love it. Love it. But especially the snarky cat sets have some really good sentiments in them. So I stamped those onto black cardstock. I use my anti-static powder tool. 
and then stamped the images or the sentiments with clear embossing ink, coated them with some detail white embossing powder, melted that with my heat tool, and then off camera, I just trimmed those down with my little guillotine trimmer. And then my card bases are Simon's Smooth White cardstock. I folded them inside out and then lined them up in my Misty. And then I'm going to stamp that skull from the Rest in Peace set. And this I'm going to stamp with Simon's Fog ink. And oh, this ink, I, like I've mentioned this in other videos, like I love, I use this ink all the time, like especially on the insides of cards because it's the perfect neutral gray. But this skull stamped in that gray ink is perfection. <laughs> Again, I'm not a big skull fan, but I was like, man, this just, oh, love it. <laughs> So stamp that and then I have a sentiment from the Bold Frights set. Ignore the the actual like image on the top of the stamp. I'm not sure. I, I wrecked it. I don't I don't know. Anyway, stamp itself works obviously. So that I stamped with Simon's Smoke ink. So just a slightly deeper gray and once those were stamped I reinforced the fold like folded the card back properly and reinforce that fold with my Teflon bone folder. And then I'm going to adhere my gray background with craft tacky glue. So I'll do that to both cards. And then I can adhere the skulls also with craft tacky glue and purposely kind of hanging those off the edge of the card a bit. That's also why I did that on the inside of the card. Cause by this point, obviously I've, you know, finally determined how I wanted these cards to, to go. So adhered the skull. And then once those are adhered, I'm going to start arranging my colorful, sparkly moths um, in rainbow order, of course. <laughs> and yeah, I did, I didn't mention, I, I will link obviously to the specific colors I use, but these are like kind of my go-to rainbow palette of distress inks, like picked, picked raspberry, carved pumpkin, mustard seed, mowed lawn, mermaid lagoon, wilted violet, like and rattle those off by heart they are just that's the colors I always reach for if I want to do a rainbow so I adhered those into place and I only used the glue kind of right on the centers of each of them so like their wings are popped up a little bit gives it a little bit of dimension once that glue is dry I just flipped these over and trimmed off the bit of the skull that was hanging off the edge of the card so that these will fit in a standard like a2 envelope and then the sentiments I'm going to pop into place with just some thin 3D foam squares. So a little bit of dimension, but nothing too crazy. And then once I've got those adhered, I am going to adhere some Studio Caudia iridescent bubbles because they're just perfect. They're perfect. And when the glue dries, like I use Craft Tacky glue for this as well. And I took the pictures too quickly before the glue fully dried, but the glue will dry clear. So then these bubbles are just like iridescent and literally kind of like floating on the cards. I just, one of my favorite embellishments. So sprinkled those liberally throughout both of these cards <laughs> and then adhered them into place with dabs of that craft tacky glue, just using my little Studio Caudia embellishment wand. And then once those are adhered, I'll just pair these with some of Simon's like slate gray envelopes and that will finish off both of these cards. So like I said, I'm going to turn the flashlight on on my phone so you guys can see how sparkly this is because sparkle is life. <laughs> see what I mean? This is the best part. Always. This is always the best part. Always very difficult to like capture on camera. It's one of those things always where I'm just like, just trust me, you know, like it's there, the shimmer's there, the sparkle is there. So I was able to get it. People do always ask, did the sparkle come off? Kind of not really. Like I don't make a point of rubbing my fingers all over my cards. However, I was handling these as I was cutting them out because I'd applied the shimmer. So sparkle was transferring, but that's these are adhered after all of that like I've handled the butterflies by cutting them out and then gluing them onto the card all these things butterflies keep butterflies moths in my head they're butterflies so whatever but I've handled them you know adhered them everything and look at the sparkle that's still there like they're still completely covered so they're good to go you know so hopefully that answers that question um and like I said, I will have links to everything in the description box below the video, as well as a link to my blog post, picture links in the blog post, all that you can find directly below. 
Thank you guys so much for watching, for subscribing, thumbs up and commenting, all of it. I appreciate you all so much and I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.